What's the niche? Unassuming hobby that has a surprising dark side to it. Disney pin collectors. I like pins and will buy them when I am traveling as souvenirs. Apparently at Disney properties pin trading is a big thing. I had stopped by one of the kiosks at Disneyland because I wanted a few Star Wars pins and saw people trading pins with the employees. I was curious about it so I googled it a bit and was amazed by the black gray market of pin trading. People would buy knockoffs and then go to the parks and trade them to staff or other patrons, even kids, for legit pins. Or they would find someone with the rare, valuable pin that didn't know its worth and try to rip them off. I guess with obsession comes darkness. I'm not sure if it's still a thing, but when I played Magic, the gathering a number of years ago, I heard some real horror stories about how competitive Pokemon and UGIO players were. One story involved a guy at a UGIO tournament holding a gun under the table to scare the opponent into losing. That if you get too close to a baby bird, the mother will smell human on the baby and abandon the nest. You probably should still avoid touching baby birds for other reasons like disease or risking injury to the animal though. Since I'm already on the topic of animal myths, another common myth is that Daddy Longleg is the most venomous spider in the world but it can't bite you because its fangs are too tiny. This myth is wrong on both accounts. They do have venom, but it's essentially harmless to humans and they can bite you. The pain just typically isn't as severe as something like a brown recluse. Edit, to clear up a lot of confusion, the term daddy long leg can mean something different in different parts of the world. There are three creatures that commonly go by the name, the crane fly, the harvestman, and the house spider. Russians use pencils in space. I think originally it was a joke about how the USA spent so much dollar money dollar on developing a zero-g pen that could write upside down without leaking all over the place. But the USSR just sent their men up with pencils. Now I knew this was unlikely, as the shavings from a regular pencil would go everywhere. I mean, I remember emptying the classroom grinder as a messy chore and I think every backpack I owned from first grade on had a fine dust of hand flaked shavings at the bottom. But I also know from art supplies that there is a peel away paper style of pencil or mechanical pencil, often with wax lead, so I thought maybe that's what they used. Nope, I am turning 40 next month and someone finally told me I was wrong. Did you know that's a myth? Yeah. They also had to do zero-g pen research. I countered with the paper peel or mechanical pencil idea. It's not the wood shavings. That fine graphite dust would be hell on electronics as an electrical conductor and there would be no way to control it. They made pens too. I don't know about wax pencils. Might be too cold up there at times. So, I knew there had to be more to the story. But for over one third of my life I believe the joke relayed to me as truth from my father, now retired engineer at Lockheed Missiles and Space, about the budget savings of the USSR. It has made me question a lot of facts I took for granted because, that is smart and he said. Not sure if it counts as a myth that's been debunked but, People who misunderstand average life expectancy When you hear that the average life expectancy was 40 a couple hundred years ago, it's not that people would only live to 40, but that half the population was dying in infancy and the other half living to 80. Obviously I'm exaggerating these ratios to make a point. Edit, a word. Height dominance in parrots is not a thing. A bird will not want to show dominance over you just because their cage is eye level. Birds just like being high up. The reason you don't want a big bird on your shoulder is because you don't want that big beak near your eyes if it becomes startled. That handling a baby bird will make the mother reject it because it smells you on the baby. Most birds don't have a significant sense of smell, so put the naky baby back in the nest. Now, sometimes mother birds will push a sick or otherwise terminal chick out of the nest, so when people try to put it back she goes hey, 
thought I got rid of you and does it again, but that's not because of you, she just knows something you don't, so take that babe to a rehab rescue and hope for the best, but a lot of the time the little squishy beans just wiggle out of the nest, so feel free to put them back in, no harm done, oh, also, Carrots don't help your eyes, night vision, that was made up by the Brits to mask the fact they had developed radar during the war. Bumblebees shouldn't be able to fly, except they obviously can. I think bumblebees perfectly exemplify the fundamental misunderstanding that lay people have of the scientific process and the difference between a law and a theory. A scientific law is a physical description of what we observe under specific circumstances. A theory, on the other hand, explains why we observe different phenomena when at least one variable isn't controlled for. So it isn't that bumblebees shouldn't be able to fly, it's that they fly as a result of a different set of variables within the mechanisms of light. That the Coriolis effect has any relevant bearing on how water drains from a sink, a bathtub, or especially a toilet. I was actually taught this by a teacher. The design of toilets direct water in a specific way, the Coriolis effect would never change that, but even in more passive drainage systems, the internal flow of water and geometry of the basin will be much more significant than that of the Coriolis effect. This is true even if water sits still for long periods of time under very specific scientific conditions, with a flat, perfectly circular pan and a centralized drainage hole. Many days after filling the water the Coriolis effect can begin to govern the direction of the water as it's emptied. But this is not exactly practical. We do see the effect in weather patterns of course though, so that's something. TL semicolon doctor, the Simpsons episode in Australia lied to everyone. Not turning your airplane mode on smartphone, interfere, jam communications. Do you really think if a smartphone might endanger a whole plane with passengers they would let it fly? That cats kill babies. I've run into this so many times since having kids, and it's not the older grandmas making these statements. I've had 20 year olds tell me that you can't have cats if you plan to have babies because they'll steal their breath or some other variation. No amount of reasoning or rationale will dissuade them of this belief. The vaccine, autism link. Debunked decades ago, the sole proponent lost his medical license over it, yet every anti-vax mom apparently knows someone whose friend's cousin has a child who turned autistic after the measles vaccine and somehow not a single one has met this alleged autistic child but the story is of course 100% true and vaccines are terrible. The whole alpha, beta male BS. The researcher who wrote it himself not only said that this cannot be used to interpret human behavior in any way, but he even proved his own findings wrong in a later study, because this behavior only applied to wolves and captivity, so, a constantly stressful situation. That peasants in the Middle Ages were all illiterate. The study that influenced the idea determined literacy by the prevalence of books written in Latin, which only the upper class knew. Most peasants could actually read and write in their own language. Edit, I recommend some of the people reading this go watch Shea Diversity's video on the topic as it does a very good job explaining it. I'm not sure this is counts as a myth. But it's something that nags at me whenever I see the meme that everyone's skull looks the same. You can take someone's skull and, unless there is severe damage because though, determine their age, sex, race, and I think in some instances even if they use certain controlled substances, though that wasn't something I ever got confirmed in my forensic science class. You must wait 24 hours before reporting a missing person. Some questions. 24 hours from when? The time you realize they were missing? The time you estimate they went missing? The time of the initial report to police, who is the legal timekeeper? If this is a law, it must have a designated timekeeper for official records. 
City Police, County Sheriff, do I hire a private attorney to file a timekeeping motion in court? If the most likely time to find a missing person is the first 24 hours, why would you wait 24 hours? If the person dies or is severely injured because the county, state refused to initiate a search, doesn't that put some liability on their office? It seems like that would have been tested in court by now. Blood is not blue. Seriously though, I was told that everyone's blood was blue on the inside when I was younger, and I honestly don't know why my mom thought that. Maybe it's just one of those things that you only believe because your family has been saying it since her grandma's grandpa's grandma's grandma's grandpa or something like that. That the Emperor Constantine picked the canon of the Bible at the Council of Nicaea. The truth is not only did Constantine have absolutely nothing to do with the canon of the Bible, neither was the canon even discussed at the Council of Nicaea, let alone decided. I don't know where this myth comes from but so many people seem to believe it and it shows no sign of dying out. There is the stupid ones like the autism and the vaccines myths that should never have been believed in the first place especially with the shoddy research around it. Then there is the ones that you can understand, like wolf packs do not have alphas like what was believed and published for a long time. The concept is still used a lot today in pop culture. Even the guy who write the paper talking about alphas and wolf packs backtracked years later after new research came out putting his findings in doubt. That human beings were once short. This is actually true. Humans are, on average taller now than at any point in history. But human height varies based on nutrition. Both modern and medieval Europeans were taller than Georgian era Europeans, for example. But at no point in modern history, the last 10,000 years, were humans hobbit-sized, as many people seem to believe. What really cracks me up about it is that there are so many ways people mess this up. Thomas Jefferson built his bed into the wall of his home. This way he could roll off the bed to his right to go to his library, or roll to his left to wash up and get ready for the day. He, like most Westerners, also believed in the miasma theory of disease, which says that diseases are caused by bad air. In Jefferson's day it was a fad amongst the American upper classes to sleep sitting up, as far from the bad air as possible. So Jefferson's bed is only, like, 5 feet 5 inches. I've repeatedly heard people look at the bed and say wow. He was so short. I guess people were small back then. Even though there are dozens of contemporary references to Jefferson being 6 feet 2 inches. I went to the fashion museum, Bath on a trip to England. I was looking at a display case of late 1700s women's shoes when a mom and young daughter walked up. The girl was like those shoes are so small. Mommy, to which mom said people used to be much smaller, sweetie. I had read the information card next to the case and so was like actually, it says here that these are samples shoemakers used to put in their shop windows. That's why there's only one type of each shoe, and that's why they're so small. Why bother making two full-size shoes if you just want to show what the finished product looks like? Mom shot me daggers. The Art Institute of Chicago had one of Henrietta's suits of armor. Some kid commented on it and his dad said well, it's small because people used to be short. Son, I had to pipe up. Well, it says here the armor was made in 1503, which would have made Henriette 12 years old. So that's why it's so small. Also, suits like this are more likely to survive, since Henry didn't joust or go into battle when he was 12. I was once at a museum that had an 1870s US cavalry soldier's uniform on display. Once again a parent told their kid that it was small because people were so much smaller in the 1870s than today. Dot. I had to point out that once modern rifles were invented, Brute strength wasn't something needed in cavalry soldiers, so it made sense to recruit smaller guys so as not to wear out the horses. After all, 
a horse can carry a 150 pounds man much farther than a 300 pounds man. Few blank stares from the dad. That a woman is supposed to bleed when she loses her virginity. That vaginas become loose the more sexual partners. Sex a woman has. Does her butthole become looser with each third it passes? The vagina is a muscle in the same way. Stop it, edit. Okay the butt has a sphincter which is not exactly the same. Which analogy do you prefer? Does your mouth become looser after you eat a big sandwich? Is that better? That vaccines cause autism or cancer or any other incurable disease. Granted, some people react to them due to allergies or sensitivities or whatever but the numbers of that are low. Also, is autism that much worse compared to the bubonic plague, pertussis, or polio? I guess I'd rather be autistic than lose a leg or have my lungs turn to mush, but that's just me. Subliminal messages back masking. No conclusive evidence has ever emerged to suggest that subliminal messages or back masking do anything at all. The one person who conducted this particular experiment for advertising admitted to a faking his results, b creating bias in viewers by intentionally telling them what they'd see before actually showing the image. Also, not only is it non-functional in advertising, there's no way in hell it can ever influence behavior, such as those nincompoops who think Led Zeppel and think Stairway to Heaven contains satanic messages in reverse, or that all rock music can make viewers kill themselves through brainwashing. Also, brainwashing your fans into killing themselves is horrible business sense. Starvation mode, at least how it is normally discussed, is a huge myth. People just regularly underestimate how many calories they eat and overestimate how much they burned. If you're overweight and are gaining weight while eating 1,200 calories a day, you are eating more than 1,200 calories a day. Food marketing is intentionally deceitful when it comes to how healthy their products are, and what actually is service size are so it can be pretty difficult to count correctly unless you have a food scale. Your metabolism is slow down slightly when you eat less because you spend less energy digesting the food, but it doesn't lower to a point where eating less would make you gain weight. More like you will get diminishing returns on how much you will lose. Not sure if this counts, but tomatoes aren't vegetables, they're fruit. In fairness this is partly true. Tomatoes are fruit, but they're still vegetables. Vegetable is a culinary term, not a botanical one. Fruit is both. I just find it personally really irritating when you get actually by someone who doesn't know what they're talking about. You never hear anyone trying to say actually pineapples are berries so why aren't they in my mixed berry smoothie? Because they recognize it sounds obnoxious not smart. You only use 10% of your brain and would become superhuman if you used 100%. You actually use 100% of your brain. Each section is responsible for controlling different functions of your body. For example, the prefrontal cortex controls thoughts, memory and behavior. The parietal lobe controls language and touch. The occipital lobe controls visual processing and the brain stem controls basic functions such as breathing and maintaining your heart rate. That the Earth is flat. By around 500 BC, most ancient Greeks believed that Earth was round, not flat, but they had no idea how big the planet is until about 240 BC when Eratosthenes devised a clever method of estimating its circumference. He realized that if he knew the distance from Alexandria to Syene, he could easily calculate the circumference of Earth, but in those days it was extremely difficult to determine distance with any accuracy. Some distances between cities were measured by the time it took a camel caravan to travel from one city to the other, but camels have a tendency to wander and to walk at varying speeds, so Eratosthenes hired them 
professional surveyors trained to walk with equal length steps, they found that Syene lies about 5,000 stadia from Alexandria. Eratosthenes then used this to calculate the circumference of the Earth to be about 250,000 stadia. Modern scholars disagree about the length of the stadium used by Eratosthenes. Values between 500 and about 600 feet have been suggested. Putting Eratosthenes' calculated circumference between about 24,000 miles and about 29,000 miles, the Earth is now known to measure about 24,900 miles around the equator, slightly less around the poles.